What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with the guest, and, and this this young sister has um, went from the U.S. to Ghana. Uh, her name is Deja, and uh, she also has a YouTube channel as well. And we definitely thank her for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. All right, Miss Deja, tell people just a little bit about yourself, and and how did you end up in Ghana? So um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I ended up in Ghana because I always wanted to visit Africa. Um, it wasn't specifically Ghana that I wanted to go to. I just wanted to visit Africa, period. I felt like it was necessary as a black person. Um, and then I had a friend from high school. She invited me back in 2015. So that was my first time on the motherland. And then from there, my experience was um, unbelievable, indescribable. So I just basically knew that I had to come back and share my experience with my family and friends. And I wanted them to see that, you know, we do belong somewhere and we do deserve a life to live happily and freely. Yeah, because recently uh, I've been, you say you're from Brooklyn. Um, yes. <laughs> And, and and you grew up in Brooklyn all your whole life. Yes. Okay. So, you know how how did you you like the, when you look at entities like the NYPD and they have been running wild the past yes. week or two. I'm pretty sure yes. you've been seeing that, right? Yes. It's funny because I literally posted something on my Instagram yesterday that that was part of the reason why I want to leave. And I feel like as people, we should want to want better for ourselves and for our family. So it's up to us to make that decision to learn more and like learn other places outside of America, because there is places where we do belong, such as Africa. Um, so it's, I feel like us as a people, we've been through so much in our history and we are so strong and I feel like we just deserve so much more and for me personally, I want that more. I want that more for my family, for when I have children, for my friends. And I feel like it's my duty to show them that we can live happily, comfortably, and we can have billion dollar businesses on Africa. Right. Well, let me, you say, okay. I'm glad you brought a lot of that up because I had just actually you know, recorded a podcast I have coming up and I, and I had ended up titling it. New York City is the new Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I was saying that is because you're seeing some of the same tactics, if you don't know anything about black history, yes. as it was using during the, the time of the civil rights movement in Mississippi with the police. Right. And so you're saying that the NYPD was so oppressive that mm -hmm. you say, you know what? Uh, I got to get out of here. Well, honestly, I don't. I personally have not seen it so much in Brooklyn until recently, like mm -hmm. that one officer. Um, but I do see it in America as a whole. M mainly I see it in the South and, you know, we see it on the news often. And once again, for me, that was just like, enough is enough now. Like, I feel like us as a people, once again, as a black people in a whole, if we are able to put our foot down and, and learn our history and actually get out of this mindset that we can only build and be here. We can only live comfortably here. Um, then we're able to, once again, live a better life. And that's just my opinion. Other people may think otherwise, but I've seen it front hand as far as venturing out to, to live in Africa. So for me, enough was enough. Like I said, my family, they all came to Ghana and they loved it. And we're all figuring out how to get everyone involved in investing in, in Africa. Okay. And, and you know, like I say you from, you know, from the look of it and, and, and I definitely can see, you know, you, you're a young sister and I have people <laughs> in my age group and older Mm -hmm. is you know you tell me hey you want to invest in the condo you want to do that oh, i don't know about that i ain't have yeah. this i don't have that what, what do you think about all those people that, that say all those sort of things it, it seems like they you know don't want either don't want to or they have a lot of excuses why they can't 
I mean, people have their own reasons, but I think it's simply because they just don't know. Some people just don't know. Some people are comfortable and some people don't want to know. And they don't want to know because then it'll take them out of what they're comfortable doing, um, their comfortable lifestyle. And that challenges people to do more. And a lot of people don't want to do more. A lot of people are okay with just living this routine and cycle. And if they're okay with that, that's okay that's okay for me. Who am I to judge anyone on their lifestyle? But as far as, because my grandfather, when I first told him that I wanted to relocate and do business in Ghana, he totally shut the whole thing down until he went to Ghana for the first time. And he absolutely loved it. So that is why for me, it's important to share my journey and my story so that people can see, like, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm 28 years old. I had a post office job. i you know what I mean? Like I'm a regular human being and if I can do it, then you can do it too. Right. So you, you started a food truck. You, you were yes. saying like, so, so what uh, type of food do you serve at your food truck? Jamaican food. We're selling Jamaican food. Okay. Jamaican food. So you're, you're originally from your people from Jamaica originally. Yes. Okay. Um, now how, how did your family even end up in the U S um, okay, so my, my grandfather is actually Jamaican. And so he actually went from England, from Jamaica to England to the US. Um, my great grandparents are the one who basically paved that way to get everyone because majority of my family are now here too. And he helped everyone come to the US, my Jamaican family. Okay, so when the last time you've been back to Jamaica? I was just in Jamaica in August 2019. Okay, there's a lot of you know, news stories coming out about the uh, Chinese yes. in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and a lot of, and from what I'm hearing, a lot of Jamaicans are pissed off about. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Chinese and took over some port in Kingston. Um, well, when I last went, I you can, I feel like the Chinese have their stamp in every single country, but. A lot of the major highways in Jamaica are built by the Chinese and then their tolls, I, I believe, are going back to the Chinese. So it's like they're running majority of the main income in Jamaica. So it's like, to, what, once again, I don't really want to say too much because I don't like to get into the whole politics of things but to me i can see and i've been seeing that the chinese have been very aggressive in jamaica i mean they're aggressive aggressive okay. aggressive in this in the sense of like having having a, an impact on the country right because it, it's like you know we need these roads we need these highways and they're the ones to build it so it's like you know <laughs> what do we what other route could we take? That's the mindset. What other route could we take? Right. Yeah. So you, you don't really get into basically you're saying it would do it. That's part of geopolitics, you know? Um, I don't like to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot, a, lot, a lot of people don't like, let me tell you something, Deja. A lot of people don't like to get into that conversation until it affects them. Because right. yeah, people just here in the U.S. like, I don't fool with them politics. And then they uh, put some new law out. They're like, oh, when did that happen? Like, right. what happened last week? Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Well, this is what happens when you don't at least keep a little ear on politics. Just a little right. bit. Unless you got a mercy world into it. Um, yeah. But no, I asked you that question because, you know, you say your family's from Jamaica, and, and, and I've been hearing a lot of that mm -hmm. um, about the Chinese, at least on our platform. Mm -hmm. um, we don't tolerate certain things, and we're seeing that the real agenda with China globally when, when it comes to black people. Yes. Um, so I, I'm not a I am not a proponent of China at all. So, um, but in you. Ghana, <laughs> yes. Let's 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 get back let's, let's get back to that nasty question about Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, Ghana and, and and many people have been going over there like with the year of return. Yes. Um, you have established business over there. Was it easy to establish business in a, in Ghana? Because there there are people like, well, how do I start a business? You know, in in the African nation, you actually went mm -hmm. went done it. So, what is the process of, of starting a business there? Um, so, I don't want to say it's easy, but once again, coming from the states, it definitely is slightly easier to get things done. 
Um, but the only thing that may be difficult is once again, not being from there. So to get certain documentation, um, may be a little bit difficult, but once again, it is possible. And I feel like because they have the initiative of the year of return beyond the return, they are making it slightly easier for people like me and people who are interested in investing or starting a business or relocating. Um, they're making it slightly easier to make that happen. So for me, what I did was basically I went to Ghana in April 2019, once again, knowing that I wanted to move. So I just went there to see and try to map things out, like how much would this cost? How much would that cost? What is the um, process of getting my business registered? What, what would I need to sell food? All these things. Um, so I suggest whoever's looking to relocate or start a business there to just go and get a sense of what the process is like, because I don't know what business it is that they're going to do. Um, so do that first. And then just like scope out the locations and see like what areas are busier, what area um, has a need for your business. And I had to use my, my friend basically helped me get my business registered because she is from Ghana. So that's how I was able to get that done. Um, and I believe that that's how you would have to, you would have to get your business done, um, registered. So you would need a Ghanaian local to get that registration if you don't have a Ghanaian ID or passport. Um, and then I just basically ask questions because it's like when you ask questions, you allow yourself to then that way people will give you answers and then they'll further direct you in to other people that may know better answers than them. So I used my resources, I asked questions, I networked, I put myself in a position to um, meet other people who are like me, who's from America and moved to Ghana, uh, because there's a lot of expats in Ghana at the current moment. Um, and there's a few young ones. I haven't met any, well, yeah, there's a few young ones around my age range. So it, it's really just about networking and, and putting yourself out there to receive all answers. Okay. So is Ghana the only African nation you've been to? Um, no, I've been to Nigeria and I've been to South Africa just in January. I, I went to South Africa in January. Okay. So, so those other nations um, that you went to, let's say Nigeria and South Africa, um, you know, what was your opinion on them? Is it, is it like, just visiting or, or you could say, you know what, I can expand my business in these nations. Um, well, eventually I would want to expand um, throughout the continent of Africa. Let's, it may not be every other country, but I do eventually want to become a franchise and venture out to the other African countries. Um, but as far as, I just felt like Ghana spoke to my soul and that's why that's the difference and why I feel comfortable being there, because even though I ventured out to the two other countries, um, I didn't get that same feeling that I got in Ghana. So I understand completely what you're saying is basically when you went to Ghana, let's say the first time you went to Ghana. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you got off the airplane and you, and you was there. Mm -hmm. How did you feel in the inside? On the inside, it's funny because I am in the process of writing a book telling that story of my whole journey. But um, on the inside, I honestly, I was excited because I finally made it. Um, at first, it seemed far-fetched for me to make it to Africa because, you know, you hear the stories, you need so many shots, it's a long process, until you actually do it. And then I found out I only need one vaccination, which was yellow fever. And... Um, it wasn't as hard as it sounded before you start to try to get that process going. But when I landed, I was excited. I was the first person in my family to go to Africa. Um, and then I was kind of nervous because once again, from all that we hear in the States about Africa, I'm like, what is the air smell like? Um, how am I going to find my friend? Because she was picking me up from the airport. It was hundreds of people at the airport. Um, and then I actually saw people at the airport that I knew back from Brooklyn. So that for me was just a confirmation that everything will be okay. 
you'll be fine. You'll have a great time. But I just knew from landing that this trip will be a, a different experience from any other country that I've been to. Uh, now let me ask you a question. You know, and, and some questions I'm going to ask, it may sound ridiculous, but I have to ask these questions. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when you got there in your experience, did Ghanaians like you? Um, actually, they did. Everyone was welcoming. Everyone was welcoming. And um, they actually did like me, even with my business. Um, I have my, I had my truck parked on a, a main road and majority of my customers were locals just simply asking like, you know, what is this? What are you selling? And I would just share them a brief history on how Jamaica and Ghana is connected. And they were so interested and they loved the fact that I came back and returned. And even when I first went, um, I stayed at my friend's family house and they were all happy that I, that I came to Ghana and that. And they were telling me that to bring other people, like show them what's here. So that whole um, stigma about Africans not liking African Americans, I think is just understanding that we, even though we are all black, we have a different outlook on life because how life is in Ghana and how life is in America is obviously totally different. So I think they just want that respect of understanding that our lives are different. Right. It, it is. See, this is, this is, and I asked that question for this reason. It, it's like, and I think this comes more so from America than anywhere else, because, you know, like living in this country, um, do with the history of racism and white supremacy, they try to put black people as a monolith. Right. Right. And, and you know, to living in the U S people in Brooklyn are different in culture than people right here in Houston. Right. And people exactly. in Houston is different in culture than people in LA. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So just in the US, we all have different type of cultures. And just like mm-hmm. people in uh, the Jamaica or in the Caribbean are different than those in the US. Or right. uh, people in the Caribbean is different than those on the continent. And we are a very um, versatile people. And, right. and, and when people say, oh, well, this person may not like me, or oh, I'm so different than them. Of course we're different. We're different. I just think it's all about respecting Right. Everyone's culture, everyone's background. Once we're able to respect each other, once again, and understanding that we are different, we cannot compare someone from Brooklyn to Texas because, like you said, everyone grew up differently and the culture is obviously different. We just have to respect that. Right. And see, when I come in, like anytime I go to an African nation, like, like I said, my first African nation was Ethiopia, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I went in there and the same thing they told you, like say when they heard I was from America, mm-hmm. boy, they, they, man, I, I remember at the airport, I had some some older brothers and boy, they were shaking my hand and mm-hmm. I had like about a few of them come around me and, and, and mm-hmm. a few of them like, man, welcome home. They actually gave me a hug. Yes, I'm like, I'm like Whoa, exactly. what is this? You know, welcome yeah, home. It, it threw me off, you mm-hmm. know, and they start saying the same thing. They told you, hey, you know, bring all your friends, bring everybody. Yes. Like, they, 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 y'all y'all need to come home. Like we waiting on y'all like that. I, and I never heard nothing like this. Wait, what are you talking about? And and as in my journey, when even when I went to the other city, I went to McKellie and they saw, you know, black Americans showing up and they say they don't see black Americans too often, which for me, I thought it was sad. It because, is sad. <laughs> yeah, they say they don't see us too often. They say, I said, who do you see? They said, we see white people and, yep. you know, we see the Chinese, you know, but we don't see black Americans, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so we happy to see you. You yeah. know, and everywhere I went, that's what they kept saying. They was just happy to see us. And I never been so welcome in my life until I went over there, you <laughs> exactly. know, and, and, and just just on some, you know, being genuine about it. Not say people don't welcome you here. No, but I'm just saying right. it's a little but different. They, you, know what I'm but you about. can you can sense how genuine and how happy that they are. The, the fact that we are now venturing into Africa um, and we're learning and exploring our roots. It's funny because. I was in an Uber driver, um, in an Uber ride, and the the driver was asking me questions, like, you know, where am I from? And I told him I started my business there, and I recorded him, and he would, you can tell in his voice how happy he was that I was there. He was like, bring everyone, this is your home, this is your land, as much as it's my land, it's your land. Um, Everyone is welcome here. We love you. Come home where it's riches and 
nice fruits. I have the video. I'm going to post it on my YouTube. But it was just so touching for this stranger to tell that story to me and for me to share it, to be able to share that with other people so that they can see that they say, and I don't know where they honestly get that, that mindset of like, oh no, they don't, they won't like us, but that's not, that's, that's false. That's, that's not true. I have not experienced one person in Africa that showed me any, any bad um, face or anything. Well, well, I'm gonna tell you where they get that from. And I can understand where they get it from. I mean, <laughs> they get it from they get it from the white media, be honest with you. Because for years the white media has propagandized the African continent as being poor, uh, mm-hmm. warlords, um, you know, uh, say uh, feed the children with Sally Struthers back in the day, as late before your time, but people might even know who Sally Struthers is. Mm-hmm. Feed the children, you know, in Ethiopia and all of that. And the, the quite the funny part is the first country I went to was Ethiopia, and that's the country they would say all the starving children was at. But yeah, when I right, was there, exactly. I didn't see nobody like that out there. It's um, crazy. Yeah, and, and, and I noticed that conversation, that's why I don't even like that conversation. You know, you you probably seen those videos. African Americans versus Africans. Ain't no versus because when you go right. out there, somebody <laughs> looking at you like, man, you know, where, where, where you come from? And run up right. on you like, hey, what's up, man? Like, what right. you doing exactly. out here? Like, have you experienced yeah. somebody Africans run up on you asking what you're doing out here? No, they won't ask me what I'm doing out here, but they're more so not not in that sense, but they're interested in seeing like what am I going to do there? You know what I mean? Once again, because they're not used to black Americans coming to Africa. They're used to white people. They're used to Asians. And then when they see someone like me, especially at my age, they're like, you're here by yourself. You're doing this. Wow. That's interesting. You know what I mean? So that and that also I feel like it makes them happy to know that we do have something here in our country that would make African-Americans come back. Like right. you do and have something to offer. And let me ask you a question. Like if you just walk around, don't say a word to nobody. Mm-hmm. You blend in, right? Yes. I, every it, it's the only thing, obviously, I I can't speak the language, I can't speak trees yet, but um even that is not an issue because majority of everyone speaks English. Um, but when I'm walking down the road from my house. Um, and I just stop at the little shop at the corner and buy, let's say, coconut fruits or whatever. It's regular. <laughs> it's it's no. I don't feel any way. I don't feel uncomfortable. And also, I feel like that's what made the transition so much easier than imagined because the people are welcoming. Like they love the fact that I'm there. Right, and, and that's like my, our recent trip. We just had to, to Kenya. I was I was for certain places, and I didn't say anything to my mom. And they're like, "Where are you from?" And they're like, "No, I'm from U.S." Like, I yeah. thought you were Kenyan. They they said that to me so many times when I was over there. And, and beyond which, I mean, it's people that look no different than, than me and you. Exactly. Um, you know, right over there, and and that's just like I say. I, I just feel like okay, that's where we belong. And you know, America. I always look at America as a big time social experiment that just really in a lot of instances went wrong yes. um, because it was started off wrong be honest with you it started <laughs> off wrong um, it really did um honestly also when i seen akon he did an interview um on a podcast and he he also explained that why are we su- like why are we allowing ourselves to suffer here in america we have somewhere to go. Like we do not have to be here. You can go to Africa and not have to worry about police police brutality. You can go to Africa and not have to worry about the fact that you're black. You know what I mean? Like we can go and own property and actually own property and don't worry about the government coming and taking it because you're back on a mortgage payment or something like that. You know what I mean? Like we belong somewhere. And I and he honestly made me feel like that interview made me feel like I can definitely do it. Akon is 100% right because, like I said, it's just me going and seeing the opportunities. Like, you saw the opportunity there, right? right. When, you, when you went, you say, man, this wide open out here. And, and so, say, can... It has so much potential. Exactly. Exactly. And I, <laughs> and I have my mindset on, on a few things. The next time I go back, I'm setting some things up physically, you know, when you I go back. You have to. 
Yeah, you know, I already have people there doing things for us on the continent now. So that's mm-hmm. they contribute on our con- our platform now, which is awesome. Um, but but when I saw the opportunity there and I saw that how you ain't got to deal with, like I said, the racism, you feel like a human being. Human. Like you, feel like, you, say, you feel like you're black. You just right. feel like you're just a, just a person existing in America. Mm-hmm. You're reminded every day. OK, you're a Negro. And, and, and you know, get about so, it. sorry to cut you, but it was one time when I when I came back from Ghana and I was at, in the airport going somewhere else. And in my mind, I was thinking like it was a lot of white people. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder what these people think about me. The fact that I even thought about that is an issue. You know what I mean? Like, why do I? And, and it's not to say be just because what they portray us to be on TV, you know, you see love and hip hop and all these ratchets and you see like, whatever they show everything is ne- negative for the most part when you sh- when you when they show black people and for me i feel like anytime i'm out and i'm surrounded by white people i have to prove that there's more to us than what they make us seem like on tv so i'm in the airport and i literally just it ran over my mind like i wonder what they think of me right here right now even if they probably not even thinking about me but just the fact that that was a thought in my mind and then i thought about me being in ghana and i was like i have never had that thought not once about i wonder what people think of me here and that to me is just the simple difference of being comfortable in your skin is not having to worry about the fact that you are black and what other people may feel about you because of your presence. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you you had a, everybody's in a different journey. Like me, I you know me, I'm the type of person. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't give a, a a flying you know what would they think about me? Right, you know, get them. But mm-hmm. um, I get exactly what you're saying. The average black person, you know, deals with that issue of, the, of them, you know, looking, staring. Mm-hmm. You know, or they like what they look automatically at? judging. Yeah, uh, judging or are they trying to look at me? You call the police. <sighs> you know, for me, like I said, it's not that I worry with them like that, but the fact is, mm-hmm. you know, on the African continent, you know, if they do show up, have you noticed they know their place? Yes, and and the, and I feel like they try to fit in. Well, I feel like that's all over, but they know their place and they know that it's more of us here. And we are in control and they want to get in with us because we have the upper hand in this country. Oh, let me ask you a question. I'm glad you said it. Are, are, and, and I'm asking because you're there. Are mm-hmm. the Chinese running Ghana? I wouldn't say they're running Ghana, but um, I do see um, Chinese businesses there. I wouldn't say they're running it, though. OK, so so so, yes, you see businesses. I mean, anybody you even set up a business. But right. they're not running. They're not running Ghana. They're not running the government. They're not running anything. They just there, just doing anything. I have. I honestly, I don't see that, especially with the president um, of Ghana. I I don't see that. I I don't see that happening, and I don't see. I I don't see it. I don't see it at all. But I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But the local. Do you think the locals would even tolerate something like that? Um, well, especially what's happening in China to Africans now, I don't, I feel, I feel like Africans have like a pride to them knowing that, um, you can't treat us this way. But however, I do notice that Ghanaians, I'm going to speak for Ghanaians because that's where I am. Um, they do have like, um, they hold other races to like a pedestal because I've seen one time I was coming out of Max Mart and let's say like the parking lot, lot guard, he, it was two Asians, a man and a woman, they were coming out of the, the store and he ran, like he left a Ghanaian to go and help them. So that's just something that I see that I feel like it, it's more to the story than just, him reacting in that sense i feel like it's a obviously like a generational curse type thing where we think that because this person is asian or because this person is white or fair skin um they deserve more 
Right, right. Well, you know, unfortunately, I always tell people that that issue is also in the U.S. And that's that's a black it's everywhere. Issue. Yeah, it's I'm saying that's the issue. But but I'm saying this with with the with the you know connection of the internet. I see a lot of brothers and sisters are waking up from that because even on the African continent, I'm seeing you know at one point in time they wouldn't dare uh, uh, speak against the the Chinese or, or the right. or white folks or whoever. Mm-hmm. And now you are seeing more and more Africans now, continental Africans coming out and say, "Man, forget these people, man. Who do these people think they are?" And this our uh, uh, you know countries. This this you know so exactly. And I'm seeing it all over the African continent. So it is a, an awakening happening. Of course, you gonna have people that do things like that. Of course. Mm-hmm. But um, now let me ask you a question: Was that guy was he, or, or lady, whoever it was, were they older or they're younger? The security or the, the person that ran to the the people you talk, you saw. You're like, what the hell he doing? Right, I was so annoyed. But, um, guy younger guy. He was he was younger. He wasn't old, so he was in his I would say twenties. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's interesting. That's very very. But I also want to I would also want to say that. From speaking to some of the younger kids in Ghana, um, I think the education, like what they teach them is basically like that, like, like that they are better in a sense, because that's what they all believe. And I would have a conversation with this young man and he honestly, his, his, his whole mindset is basically like he wants to marry a white woman because he, he feels like being with a white woman just makes him would make him be better. Mm, no, it won't. Well, that's what he thought. So yeah, yeah, like I said, see, so, so yeah, I know on the African continent, it has to be a re-education process. Definitely. It definitely, <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. Does. And, and I feel, you know, because we come from Babylon, I call America Babylon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because we come from Babylon, we can actually, you know, and I've had continental Africans write me more than once. Tell me, we need you guys to come here to teach us teach. what you know about, right. you know, the, the, our history here too is yeah, important history, for them to know. Yes, the history and about the white supremacists because they said they have certain tactics and you guys already know their tactics and you can share it with us and that way it won't work. Right, exactly. And, and you look at the Chinese; they only following the playbook of of the West mm-hmm. all over again. They just doing it a little softer. Yes. Then what the way they not being as brutal or anything like the West was to colonize they do it in a different way they do it trying to do it through economics and they still trying to colonize but they trying to do it economically i agree i definitely feel like it's our duty because it starts with the children especially well the parents have to teach them too but especially because they are the future we have to make sure that they know their worth and their history and that and i think honestly i do see a change so I do see a lot happening. Like, like you said, we are speaking up for ourselves. Um, and there was just a, a protest in front of the Chinese embassy in Ghana because of what's happening to Africans in China. So something is happening and I'm, I'm happy for it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's this a thing that I've noticed is that it's good the the I, I like to say you know we all say we all part of the you know global the new global black media that can that consists of all of us throughout the world right mm-hmm. and when you talk about the situation happened in uh Guangzhou China to the Africans right, right. we all talked about that and, mm-hmm. and it stirred up emotion and anger and I and I when I talk to continental Africans they tell me our media houses wasn't even showing that footage like that they like, say they wouldn't show it and then mm-hmm. as I've done some research, you know, a lot of the Chinese are getting into these countries are, and, and literally bribing uh, media companies not to show certain things about them, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So the, the young people that you say that protested in front of the Chinese embassy, they saw the videos that it was on YouTube and Facebook mm-hmm. and, and Instagram, et cetera. So yeah. now the story is actually being told, uh, you know, through the lens of people, you know, on the continent, throughout the diaspora. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, we, we are affecting change on the continent, believe it or not. And some of us haven't even stepped foot there. Right. Exactly. And I think it's important. We have to. I I so see um, the change and I would want more of us to take advantage of the opportunities that we have now, especially with the year of return and beyond the return to return before 
all these other people come in and try to take advantage of that. We we have to be the ones to um, put our stamp on there. And not to come and take over in a way where we're trying to change the country to be westernized, but to bring jobs and opportunity and make it better, basically. Yeah, you're coming in, and, and this is what I tell people. When I go to anybody's country, I come in with, well, of course, I can go to your, your city or your mm-hmm. house. Right. I'm going to come in with a humble heart. I'm going to come in and it's just trying to be friendly and, and, mm-hmm. and you know, hey, I'm listening. You know, like, I'm, I'm not from here. Right. You know, I'm not trying to come here like I know more than you or whatever. No, because this is not where I'm from. Mm-hmm. But I believe most black Americans are, are even people like you that's originally, you know, family from the Caribbean. We're not trying to come in there to colonize nobody or or anything like that. If anything, we just want to learn. We want to yes. get acclimated. I'm not saying we you're going to be a guy named like them and I don't expect you to be. Right. Um, but but you can learn. You can grow. You can get friends and, and mm-hmm. all kind of different things. You can learn some of the foods they eat if you like it. You don't like it. You can mm-hmm. share your food with them. Because food definitely. Always say is a great way to bring to people together. Yes, food. definitely. You know, as food is an awesome thing. I love food <laughs> and Jamaican food is awesome, too. I love Jamaican food. Um, but but what I'm saying is many people will say, well, the first question to ask too, and to hear about you being in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Well, what kind of job I'm going to get when I get there? And I try to tell people you don't go to we talk about Ghana. You don't go to Ghana to get a job. For a job. No. And, and, and the reason why I say this and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Because people are looking for jobs as it is when there, right? Why are we gonna come in and take the little jobs they have? Us, I, I'm a firm believer. We need to come there and create a business. Create the jobs. Yeah, and right. Akon said, "Well, everything you're doing here, go do it there, and say do you can be there. successful in five years." But you know, yes. you let me know. I totally agree with that. Um, a lot of people have been asking me the same thing: what jobs? And it's, when you're coming from the states, first of all, the pay won't be what you're expecting in the states that's one thing to have in mind so i don't see i don't necessarily see the point in going there to get a job um and like you said why would why are we coming there to take jobs away from those who need the jobs there as you guys know i have my um, food truck and my main purpose is to create the job so that I can contribute back to the economy, back to the people some way, somehow. At least I know that I'll be able to help someone pay their rent, help someone with their children, whichever, however I can help. But as far as it's going there to get a job, I, I don't see that. I don't see the point in that. It, it, it really doesn't make sense to me to go there to work. <laughs> right, right. And I feel it's exactly the same way. I think we should come in and, and like I said, just you, like you said, contribute. Contribute, and, and yes. That, that we can. So mm-hmm. when you, also when you got there, like say, because I'm, I'm about to, you know, wrap up, which I won't take you too much more of your time. Um, people may say, well, OK, she went over there. Um, you know, what about where is she staying? Like, like, is, he, is she get an apartment on her own or, or, or how is she doing it? Because, you know, people ask a, a thousand questions when it comes to that. And yes. they act like you're a unicorn. You know, that's, <laughs> you're not a right. unicorn. I mean, I'm it's a just, regular person. Yeah, you're a sister that doesn't. Got tied, went over there to Ghana, liked it, your whole family. So mm-hmm. so how was that when you first got there and you said, you know, I want to stay somewhere? Um, okay, so once again, like I said, when I first went in 2015, I knew I wanted to move. Um, and then when I went there again, April 2019, I was just basically scoping out the areas, trying to figure out where would I want to live. Um, and then when I went in October, I I stayed with my friend... I want to say for like a month or two before I actually found my, I got my own apartment, but I was literally out every single day looking for an apartment. Um, and I think once you know what area you want to stay in, it makes it a little bit easier. But for those who are interested, um, I think it's important that they know that they would at least have to have um, at least a year um, of rent up front. My landlord he allowed me to do six months at a time. Um, so you can negotiate with some of them. Some of them are firm on their 12 months and some of them want 24 months. But then again, the cost of the rent is doable. So you can find um, 
a self compound depending on the area for like three hundred dollars a month. Okay, and so on the continent, and I've heard this before. So they not like America. Or they like doing too many monthly payments. They either like paying up front six months or, or, or a year up front. Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, so and also it's like I also heard that it's the same way with um, when you buy a home. And mm -hmm. if you if you a person got a little money, I heard you maybe can do a two year. I guess we we say mortgage, but they call it a bond out there. Is that how they call it? What do they call uh, it when you buy a home? Um, to buy, I I have not. Um, I don't know about that as yet, as far as buying a home, because I'm more interested in like buying actual land. So, I know that as far as with land, you can do like a three payment plan before you actually own it. So let's say if you don't have the entire amount right there, you can do like one payment, two payment, three, three, up to three payments. Um, but as far as the buying a home, I'm not sure. I would have to find that out. Okay. So, so Deja, uh, tell people, you know, how you can, they can get to your YouTube channel and, 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 and check out your content because you share a lot of your adventures um, in Ghana on your channel, correct? Yes, I do. So my YouTube channel is Deja's Views, which is spelled D-E-I-J-H-A apostrophe S Views, V-I-E-W-S. And that's also my Instagram handle. So it's Deja View, Deja's Views without the apostrophe for Instagram. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to her channel and everything we have put, you know, everything subscribe. in the comment. Make <laughs> sure you, you subscribe. We definitely want you to go over there and subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, with Deja, it was a good, you know, having a conversation with you. Um, and, and I hope business, you know, get boom more and more and more. Thank uh, after, you. And I know your president had lifted the lockdown. So, so everybody getting back to normal, right? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So check out her content. If you have any questions about Ghana, maybe, you know, Deja could answer that question for you. And, uh, you know, Deja, you like to say, you just have a blessed day. Thank you. You too.